What's going on guys, Matt over here with Lethal Garage and today is the day we finally get the inner chiller on. Now, as you guys know, I'm having IAT issues at the track. It's getting in the 150s, 160 range. You can even see it. I just drove around the car. It's warmed up. My IAT2 is 114. My intake temp's 127 and it is 59 degrees outside. That's not good. So we're gonna strap on this inner chiller. We're gonna, I mean, you see these numbers. This is idle in the morning. Uh, we'll see what it is. Uh, idle when it's done and then at the track, see if we conquer these hot air temps. And uh, we'll go over all the details of how the inner chiller works as we install it. So sit back, relax, and this is gonna be, I'm gonna try to make this as fast as possible via cut, but inner chiller install, let's do it. Like seriously, that, that can't be good. 145, 145, 125. That's not boring. 147, look, it's getting hotter. We've made it to the Bowtie Garage. Today we are installing the inner chiller. Uh, cars lifted up, we're not really doing too much. We got the car lifted up. We're not taking tires off or wheels or anything, uh, but you do have to do simple things. Obviously I have the supercharger installed. We're pulling a lot of the piping and tubing that has that hooked up, fill valves, because the um, Whipple uh, tank and all that stuff's going away. We have the Cordez tank sitting over there, so that's also going in on top of the inner chiller. And then, uh, yeah, so we're just removing stuff, prepping stuff, and then we'll get the front bumper on, and then I'm gonna walk you through all the parts and pieces of the inner chiller and uh, start assembling. Well, Mike is uh, looking at Instagram, making fun of uh, Texas. <laughs> uh, not, well, what, what is it? Texas Muscle? Yeah, Texas Muscle 5.2. 5.2, yes. Yes, that's happening. So front end's off, air intake's out, splitter's off, it's all sitting over here. But now we got a big table full of parts to install. Got the inner chiller main unit here, all the parts and pieces. The one thing you're not seeing in this picture is the additional lines and the wiring to wire this bad boy up. Now, we also have our big Stewart pump here, 30 gallon per minute, 30 GPM, nice. And then we also have the Cordez reservoir that we're gonna be installing as well on the car. So lots to install today. Again, we're gonna uh, walk you through the inner chiller install, show you exactly where it goes, how it's set up, or at least where we're choosing to put it, and uh, get it all going. And we'll even go through the parts that aren't on the table yet because again we're going to get everything in place and then we're going to get the dimensions and measurements for the fittings that we need and then we're going to go down and grab them and then come back and install it and one thing i do want to highlight in this install it does require uh you to recharge your air conditioner so basically your ac unit it's going to get discharged it needs to be recharged uh, and in that, you'll need to either get a refill can. Uh, these use the, God, was it 134? Is that yeah, what it is? R134. Yeah, R134 style fluid, so it's pretty easy to get. There are other vehicles out there that are using the, what is it, the YF1234, the stuff that's completely it's, terrible for the environment. It's R1234 YF. That's it. And then it's in the later 16 models, 17 and 18. Oh, do they, they put it in the new ones? Yes. Yeah, so that stuff, they're like, it's car it has a carbon footprint of one. And then if it lights on fire, it's the worst thing for the world ever. Freaking environmentalists, you morons. Anyways, uh, yeah, so we're gonna continue disassembling things. Uh, we're gonna basically disconnect the pump that is flowing for the supercharger now, because again, we got the big Stewart pump here. And then also the just disconnecting lines and draining the actual system itself uh, so we can get ready for the other parts and pieces going. So let's do it. You ready? He's not ready. What is that? This is the stock C7 Z06 pump. This is also the same exact pump that they use on the Z01. That's the Whipple pump. Whipple, why are you giving us baby pumps? The question is, is what's the GPM rating between the two? Nobody knows what the rating on this one is yet. 
I'm not for sure what that one is, but I know the new one. Honestly, this looks like a D5 pump from uh, computer water cooling systems. When we pull it out of the box, I'm like, I'm legit putting a D5 pump from a PC water cooling loop. You guys put those in your PCs? They're about that big. The D5s. I still use a cell phone. Look at the pump size. So Z01, Z06, the Stewart pump I put into my car. So the pump that was in my car. It's like a third of the size. Really? Really? <laughs> there is a lot of ways you can go about mounting this massive inner chiller. Now, to state, there will be a few people out there. Why don't you go killer chiller? Well, force induction inner chillers have proven to be some of the best on the market. They keep things cold. Now, in our instance, we're looking at a lot of different areas of the vehicle where we can put it. Now, Mike's still disassembling stuff, but we're thinking you can put it here, but because of the size, we are worried that it will block any airflow going into the radiator. Uh, our radiators and condensers and all that stuff, which are still important in the system because it's still using the condenser and it's, you know, if you want to drive the car off the racetrack, like go to car meets and stuff, I don't want to have to run the inner chiller all the time. I don't have to. And so we're going to leave the radiator with the supercharger set up so it still functions properly. But the way we have decided to do it is we're actually going to cut into the crash bar. Yes, this is very not safe. Uh, I am degrading the, what, strength of the front end of my car, but all for the purpose of power. <laughs> so what we're going to do is we're going to cut into this bar here and we're just going to, it's going to just tuck in there really nicely. It will mount to the top side of the bar, but we're just going for a super clean install. Uh, I'll show a little aspects of it. You're going to have to do it how you see fit if this is something you want to put on your car. Um, there's a lot of different options, but we just felt this will be the cleanest way to do it. And yeah, the other part is finding where the uh, Stewart pump goes because that's not where it's going. That turned out a lot cleaner than I thought. And it's still really sturdy. Now, this is just held on here with two bolts right now because we were figuring stuff out. But inner chiller will sit right in this nice little opening. So we're not losing any airflow capability. I mean, we'll lose a little. There's cables and... Well, not cables, tubing and whatnot that are going through places. But that being stated, uh, yeah, if you don't want to cut your your front bumper, uh, you don't have to, but you will be contending with airflow potential issues. So again, we're setting my car up so it can be both track ready and so we don't have to run the inner chiller 24/7. Uh, so this was the method we're going down, and I think it's a it was a smart decision. Um, Yes, my car is more susceptible to take more damage if I get in a front end collision, but I'll take that risk. Don't tell my insurance. As you can see, the inner chiller is now ins inserted in, in I, whatever. Surgically transplanted. It's surgically transplanted into the vehicle. Look at that nice, perfect fit. Bolted up top, all good to go. This is gonna be clean and we didn't sacrifice much airflow into the radiators, intercooler, or the condenser. At this point, we are getting the connections to the suction and the liquid line in place. This is the suction line. Under the bonnet. And you can see the nice custom fitting they have for it. At this point, as you saw on the suction line, the liquid line as well, we're basically installing where we're tapping into the vehicle's air conditioning lines and allows us to split off to hook up into the inner chiller so it works properly. So that's where we're at at this point. Again, I'm not going through every step by step here, but you know, gives you the highlights. We have the liquid line and the suction line adapters in, and at this point we're starting to clamp our hoses with the dual clamp setup. They do give you a little nifty tool. You can see the spacing, you make sure it's all in the right place, and this way you make sure you get perfect clamps 
uh, done. Now to do this, you do need a specific tool. If you don't have one, you can look it up. They even link to them uh, in the inner chiller setup, but you wanna make sure you clamp these down properly and get it all hooked up. So we have lots of clamps to work with because we have tons of fittings. Uh, so you're gonna be using this a lot, but uh, yeah, do it right the first time. Here's a up, better up close look of how to do it. You can see we have the clamps. They're already in the blue piece. You can see you can slide it right on, butts up right to the hose, and then you can slide in the fitting like slow, and there you go. Then you crimp them down and you're good to go. And you can see the little hats up top. Your tool literally crimps onto these and squeezes them tight. And typically what we'll do is we'll pull the plastic thing off and do a pull test as hard as we could and make sure it's on there good. And if it doesn't budge, you know you did it right. We've replicated, put the in or the fitting on the suction line. This line had a nice piece of tape on it and we had a separate insulation, uh, what am I trying to say? Roll of insulation, but it said, insulate this line. We insulated it, mm -hmm. done, get it done. Now we're gonna put it in, we'll measure it to length, which we basically already did, but we'll cut it off and then repeat the fitting on the other side. Screwed into here? Yes screws into the suction line, which we did do some modifications to the bracket that was there so it would fit properly. And then you can also see down here, this is the liquid line. We haven't gotten to that point yet, but we do have the line hooked up, which we showed you earlier for the dryer, because this is gonna go into the dryer on the inlet, I believe. This is the inlet into the dryer, potentially. Yeah, uh, no, like no, this no? is the loop that goes back into the condenser. Uh, okay, I'm fired. Either or. Yeah, I'll, sh I'll show you when it's all hooked up. Sorry, I'm confusing everybody. At this point, we're installing the Silinoid because it's so sillyly large. No, but really, uh, at this point, we, there's a cylinder or a Silinoid that's gonna open and close. This is what the switch controls, so you can turn on and off the inner chiller. Uh, we're gonna be placing that in line as outlined. There is an inlet that does face to the cabin side of the EVAP, am I right? Yeah. I think I said that right. Which is about towards the line side. Yes. So. so that goes towards that, you're good to go. You wanna make sure you do that properly or you did it wrong. Uh, yeah, so we're figuring out just the best way to place this and you know, to make it nice and fitted properly, really. My horn's going off on my car. So horny. If you guys are following me on Instagram, you would know that joke. Uh, so yeah, he's just getting the tubing and sizing all in and are you sure you wanna go there? At this point, we have lots of tubing and everything, but we just, we gotta put the front bumper and tighten it all in place. Get the look, he, he did it all. We got the lower, uh, I think that's the, is that the trans cooler? That's one of the trans coolers, right? It pulls off your tranny. I think it is. I don't, I don't, I forget what cooler that is, but we bolted that back in place. So now we can actually situate and figure out exactly where we're gonna put the dryer. So my hair can look fabulous while I'm driving. And then, <laughs> no, I'm, I'm kidding. Um, but we're gonna place the dryer in place where it needs to go or figure out where it's exactly gonna go And then we'll get all the rest of the piping and tubing in place uh, Yeah, so that's where we're at. So this turned into a two-day project several days because the Cortez tank was welded wrong and Because of that we kind of slowed down on other things and it just yeah, it, it spiraled God, that 91 is burning my face. We'll turn it into a 15 inch conversion yet. 15 inch conversion coming up next. So I'm not gonna do another video. We're just gonna go straight to tomorrow and finish this up. So I'll just snap to tomorrow. Hey everybody, welcome to this garage. Next year. <laughs> day two of the inner chiller build. We're back. It's the next day. It's what, it's like 4.35 already. I don't even know four, what time. Four yes. day. Election day. We're in here building America. <laughs> That being stated, uh, the Cortez expansion tank, our reservoir, which is here, unfortunately they shipped it to us and all of the mounts on this are backwards. So these are supposed to be here. These are supposed to be flipped. Uh, yeah, so them being awesome, I reached out to them and said, hey, uh, there's a problem with my tank. And they're like, yeah, we'll get you a new one. So they obviously knew there was a problem with some of the tanks that went out. I don't know why they didn't reach out to me and let me know, hey, you're one of those people, but whatever. It is what it is, they're giving us a new tank. Unfortunately, it's not here today. I should have just drove to Arizona to go get it, what do you think? Well, well it gives us time to put the horns in. <clears throat> no. If you guys follow on Instagram at all, you would have saw the picture of 
the horns. Uh, Mike's threatening to install them on my car unless I get car parts here pronto. Uh, but the new tank's coming, and then the other side was is we were gonna do the 15 inch conversion. Uh, one of the wheels showed up not polished on the back, and then the 15 inch conversion set brakes came in black when they were supposed to be red. So this is just not my week for stuff. So basically, the Cortez tank will be here tomorrow. We'll be able to get the water pump and all the lines run once that happens. Um, but at this point, we do have the inner chiller in place. We do have a lot of the suction line and the liquid lines all connected, um, but we still have to hook up the dryer properly, I believe. And we still have to get the water pump, which is literally just sitting in a brake duct right now doing nothing. Um, but we're gonna get the wiring done. So we went down to O'Reilly's. Oh, oh. O'Reilly's Auto Parts, right? So we got some wiring, got some switches, got a little light, fuse, um, a relay, beautiful nice little relay, and then the connector for the relay. And uh, we're gonna start having some fun with wiring and get this hooked up so we can control it and turn it on and off. So let's, let's do that. Sending out the SOS. What? Let's just let you know that you're turning. <laughs> BMW owners. So, so, the package says red glow indicator light. Los indicadora. I can't, sorry, Spanish speaking people. I apologize. No. Um, and then in the back, in some very small, fine print, blinking LED light. I didn't see that. I, I didn't see that. So, I guess my indicator light's going to flash at me and drive me insane. Great. Wiring wise, we have to get power to this solenoid or check valve or whatever you wanna call it, but this is what literally enables the inner chiller system to turn off and on, and it will be turned on and off with a switch inside the cabin of the vehicle. Now we do have a relay that we set up. We're gonna be running this over to the fuse box and add a fuse, uh, really just wiring this up. Now keep in mind, this kit does not come with any of this wiring whatsoever. Uh, force induction inner chillers requires you to bring your vehicle to a engine or electrical engineer or someone who knows what they're doing. In this instance, I got myself a <laughs> inner chiller is a cold. A bolt out bridges. <laughs> so he's working on all the wiring for me. Uh, he's getting so cold because the inner chiller is so cold. He's got the heater busted out right now. <laughs> it's coming along. Yeah, but. I will show you what I'm working on. So Bowtie's working on the wiring and I'm working on some customizations of myself. So I didn't really know where to put the switches and there's gonna be a couple more switches added to the car and you're probably already seeing it. Oh, so the home link sits like this up in the car. I'm gonna have three on off switches that are gonna be setting up here. I'm not gonna go into details what these other switches will become, um, but I'm gonna add all three of them in here. It'll be a nice clean look, uh, but the outside one will be for the inner chiller. Pretty simple, pretty easy, uh, and I think it will look super clean in the car, just like that. You know, I'm gonna feel like I have a fighter jet. Like, turn it on, turn it off. Choo -choo -choo, choo -choo -choo. Choo -choo -choo, choo -choo. Is this the nitrous switch? Is that is that what we said? Nitrous here. Yep. And then we're doing uh, what was this? Is this the pull in the other two carburetor switch? Yeah, that's that's what that's for. That's the one for the horn. Voice, voice, voice. Voice, follow. No, don't follow him. Follow me. Sing, 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 voice, voice, voice. Guys, it's day three. I believe we finally have all the parts here that we should have had for, that we should have had? Should have, should have had, should have had. I'm fairly certain you forgot should've. something. I, I forgot words. Uh, oh, we need one or three quarter adapters. No parts again. Anyways, I got all the parts he told me to get yesterday. I told you to get. No, no, no. Yes. Anyways, Cordez sent the right tank. So this is the old one. Here's a new one. You can see how the mounts were obviously put on wrong on the first one. So this one's going back. This one's staying. At least we have that done. So now we can get the basically the loop almost completed, but we need to get the adapters from one inch to three quarter inch so we can get the water pump hooked up properly. And yeah, so that's where we're at. Let's get going. After a massive dilemma in adapters and step downs, 
we were finally able to get the proper one inch to three quarter inch in our 12, our dash 12 90s. So that way these dash 12 90s are coming out of the inner chiller. Uh, again, they did not provide all the fittings that we needed uh, because we're using some different tubing size because of this monster. So Mike is putting some, what is that technically called? It's power grip. It's the Gates power grip. Uh, Hose clamps. There you Basically, go. Basically, it's a big piece of heat shrink that replaces your warm style hose clamps and things of that nature. It's a little more difficult to get a hold of, but man, does it give a clean look. It definitely does. And we got ginormous one inch pipes sticking out of that pump. So we got to, we have to drop this down to three quarter inch. Obviously, uh, we have the Cordez reservoir now in place. You can see the inner chiller is still down here. Started running wires and everything, got it all hooked up for the relays, for the solenoid, you saw that yesterday. And then also for the pump power, where did all those cables go? Oh, he's got them over there. So you got the power, you have the trigger and the ground. Um, and I believe it's tapping, we're tapping into the EVAP? Yeah? Yes. So we're tapping into the EVAP to trigger for the pump. And yeah, I think we're getting really close. And then also, I don't, I didn't show you the controls. Or maybe I did. I don't remember if I did, but yes, we got the controls for the home link up in there. You'll see there's a couple other ones. I got some lights for this, so I'm going to put those in. And uh, yeah, no, it's coming along. So let's get this. Let's get this finished. Mike's like, please get it out of my garage, please. Just please. I apologize for the shadows and the lighting. It's late and it's not very light in here, but what I did, and this looks like a wiry mess, and it is right this moment. I'm gonna clean it up, make it look good, but what I did is I grabbed the Gen 5 DIY uh, radar detector power harness with extra power leads. And I'm using that as my 12 volt reference, and I'm plugged that in, and then I have the big red cable that you see hanging right here. That is the trigger wire, and then uh, I ground it into the extra power leads, and basically, this should allow the kit to turn on so the car has to be in accessory mode for that to work so really what we need to do right this moment is put the car in accessory mode maybe there we go so that has power up here and then if my theory is correct if I hit this switch this light should turn on oh that I don't know can you hear the clicking I hear clicks. You liar. Is it working? Yep. <laughs> yes. Sorry for the constant dinging. So, success. A little bit of success in this evening. So the, the next problem we have is there's a lot of tubing and we moved the inner chiller into the front crash bar to allow cool air to get into the radiator. And now with all the massive tubing, we're realizing, hmm, there might not be an easy way for the radiator to breathe. My light just died. So yeah, we'll go from there. Sorry, LED lights are super bright, but there's the switches all back up in place, tucked in, wires looking clean. I know it's dark. I'll try to, I'll come back out here in the daytime so you guys can see it, but I'm excited. It looks good. I got little, little switchies, but the car has to be in accessory mode for it to, here, we'll do it one more time. <laughs> I'm super excited. So, it's an except, isn't it? I don't think it's an accessory mode. No, it went half accessory mode. There it goes. No, that's still not accessory mode. Push, hold, start button. There we go. Here we go. See? Light on. That means we are ready to, we're chilling. I should make that a blue light. A little late now. Nice. It is late, but we have made headway. We now have power cables to the pump, which we are mounting right there. We're a little. We're a little, uh, we're not worried, but we'll see how it fits with the bumper. We're gonna have to move, remove some of the crash bar stuff. Uh, the little padding, or what do they call that? I'm not worried. Mike is not worried. Not 
Uh, but we got the cables running, we have the power, so this pump is running to, where is it, off the EVAP, right, the trigger? The EVAP triggers a relay which triggers the pump. Yes. So there's a trigger to the, the EVAP that's going to trigger the pump, so that turns that on. We're pulling power from the fuse box and we actually grounded it right here where our relay is for the solenoid for the inner chiller. Sorry, it's a little hard to see, but that's where we grounded everything here. It is a grounding point on the vehicle. Um, that being stated, obviously the Cordez is in and we're starting to fill the system up. So next start, our next step is starter up and, well actually no, we still have to fill the AC line. We have to recharge it. Um, what the car does? Yeah. Oh. Yeah, the car has to be warmed up. We have to get a little bit of heat in here. We can't fill it up. Uh, if it's below, like, I think it's like 60 degrees, you can't put AC in. Mm. It, it That's whole, depressing. It throws the whole system off. Fun. Fun. <laughs> so, we got the car in diagnostic mode. You can see the pump is shooting that water through the system, so that's a good sign. And uh, we're gonna check for leaks and other things, which we shouldn't have. We've tightened things down, but you never know, so triple check. But uh, you can hear that pump. It's not as loud as I thought it was gonna be. I thought it was gonna be louder. I thought it was gonna like be pool pump loud. It is loud, but it's not as loud as I thought. I mean, with the engine running, you're never gonna hear it, so. Dang. Get some good flow. We got first start on the car with the system. Uh, the inner chiller is not charged or on. This is just straight fluid going through the system with no heat exchanger. Remember, we took the heat exchanger out of the car. So the intake air is 87 right now. Remember, the IE2 is calculated, but it's showing 82. That's idle sitting there. Not terrible. We'll see. So again, inner chiller is not on yet. Uh, it's not even charged yet, so we're letting the car warm up, see how warm we can get it in the garage. It is kind of cold outside. Uh, my, my, it's saying 64. So we'll see if we can get it warmed up and uh, and uh, get it charged and actually test the inner chiller and see how much lower those temps go once we get that water chilled. So let's do that. So it's still cranking, temperatures are still dropping, but we have fluid going through the car. What, the car's been going for 20 minutes? 43, 44. Most of this is the fluid coming from the supercharger. Yeah, this is fluid coming from the supercharger. Because it's literally coming out down right into the tank. So that's the hot side. That's impressive. Guys, this has been a journey. Sorry I didn't get into the nitty gritty of putting everything back together again. Um, but we left off with everything basically in place we had everything connected and it was really starting it up which we did we got it started up everything was flowing but getting the front fascia on was kind of difficult now as you know i got the stewart pump the thing is massive it's not a small pump by any means so we ended up removing the led lights from the little kidney corners there which i'm okay with uh it gets a little more airflow right no okay um but we ended up removing that um, the other side was the um, Cordez tank. Because it was metal, we ended up doing uh, wrapping. And actually here, let me pop the trunk, or the trunk, the hood. And I can show you some stuff. Um, really phase one after, you know, we, we just got frustrated and we just kind of threw it back together again. But pretty happy with the way it's turned out. You can see the motor, everything's great. The benefit is, is this gets nice and cold like it's not even hot i was running the car a little bit earlier it's cold <laughs> so awesome um, but that being said we because of the cordes tank we had to cut the plate here uh and this cut didn't turn out as beautiful as we wanted it so we're actually going to order a new plate and try to get it a nice straight or a radius or we'll figure it out it's the little things now just touching it up making it look perfect um but as far as the front goes we're happy with everything looks there's still a few parts and pieces that need to be wrapped with uh, anti-condensation. Um, you can, I don't know if you can see in the video, but there's a fitting down in there that we want to wrap uh, with some of the gooey stuff and all that being said, like I don't have double-sided tape for my front-facing camera, so it's just kind of hanging here right now, which is fine. 
um, but it's back together again. And so, yeah, so really happy with the way it's turned out thus far. We are gonna do more work on it. I'll create more content around it as we try to clean it up and make it look as good as possible. I don't know if we'll move the pump. I don't know if we'll end up putting a reservoir in the trunk of the car and running lines forward. There's just a lot of things because huh, the way that this thing functions is it needs as much airflow as possible on the condenser. So those are all still things to consider. So yeah, that's where we're at. There are a few things that we have learned in this uh, <laughs> interchiller install one my ia2 my iat2 number is actually a calculated number it's not an actual number from temps directly uh, we think we know what the issue is we think it's an issue with the tune currently and that is why the number is still a little high right now or why it's been high in the future as well or in the past future past past future But you can see here, temps are really good. IET2 is at 82, intake air 69. And uh, that's with the con condenser fan not always on or on 100%. So when you run your inner chiller, if your uh, fan is on, keeping that condenser airflow going and while you're driving, it's really good. It's gonna drop the temps really low. Uh, we saw temps in the low 30s the other night, um, but right now I'm just driving the car around to see exactly where it's going to settle. Uh, but we do need to get the car retuned. We do need to adjust the IET calculation uh, tables or I don't know exactly what it's called, but there's a calculation issue right now in the car because there's just no way with the temp or the temps as cool as they are and the fluid as cold as it is. There's, there's no way these numbers are right. And we were seeing it across the board. So there's a lot of testing to do. That's all coming. But the big thing is, is the inner chiller is now installed on the car and uh, it's running really good. There's still a few things with the install that we want to clean up, but uh, for now it's good enough. We're going to do a lot of testing on it. We're going to watch for leaks or issues. Um, we ended up wrapping a lot of the, uh, well, because I had the big metal reservoir, we ended up wrapping it with more um, anti-condensation tape, basically the same kind of stuff that they send you with the kit, but I kind of wasn't thinking that the Cordes tank was solid metal and it's holding all that cold air, so uh, we just resolved that problem as well. So uh, stay tuned for lots of things, um, lots of testing, lots of results. Super excited to show you guys what it all is gonna do, but early indications are the temps are a heck of a lot lower and that's great so uh, we shall see so as always guys thanks for checking out this video thanks for following along huge shout out to uh, force induction <coughs> um, inner chillers for uh, sending the unit at a discounted cost um, but outside of that if you guys want more information or details about the product look in the description below and if you want to see more details hit that subscribe button follow along tons of videos coming so as always guys I hope to see you on the road